So I joined a D&D &D club. I joined a local gaming club and a lot of the game masters, a lot of the dungeon masters, they all like to use uh, terrain. Or at least some of them do anyway. The one that I've played with so far likes to use terrain. And I think like most D&D uh, &D clubs, they're inevitably going to be looking for some more dungeon masters and I do want to uh, contribute to the cause as it were. So we're going to get started today with the basics, right? Just your classic sort of encounter. We're going to be making a little encampment. And the best bit is all the parts that we're going to make today use the same material. Also, if you're new here, by the way, hi, my name is Taryn and this is Conjured Craft. So you're probably wondering what this wonder material is that we're going to be using in five different projects. Well, it's coffee filter and tea bags. Now, I don't want to speak out of turn for anybody who watches this channel, but if you like art, if you like painting miniatures, there's probably a strong correlation that you also enjoy caffeine. I know not everybody necessarily has a, uh, <laughs> a drip coffee machine uh, like my partner does, um, but I know how many of you are watching from the UK, and so I know you probably have some tea bags lying around. You could just as easily take some paper and uh, stain it or dye it to the color that you want, um, but that is that is the one strange thing that you're gonna need for this project. No XPS foam, no sculpting, nothing more complicated than that, I promise. Now, one of the first things we gotta talk about making is what I'm gonna refer to as leather for the purposes of this video. I am taking a piece of my coffee filter paper, uh, a piece of my tea bag, whatever combination of the two that you have, and I'm going to apply some glue onto the surface of the paper um, and you can spread it out with your finger or brush, whatever you prefer. The glue doesn't really need to be uh, wet. You don't have to mix it with any water. And then you're going to glue two pieces of this stuff together, whatever it is that you're using. The reason I say to do this is because the two glued together are not only much stronger than one on their own, but you're able to bend and shape it a little bit more than if you were to just use uh, tea bags on their own, for example, which which of course are quite flimsy. So this is just really a preference sort of thing to get the right consistency that you're looking for. If you feel like it's too flimsy, uh, make some leather and then just use that leather throughout the rest of the video. I hope that makes sense. We're starting off by making some sacks, just some like little burlap sacks of whatever goods a group of merchants or a group of uh, dungeoneers might have on them. You're gonna want some foil, right? Just whatever aluminum foil, aluminum foil, whatever you call it, whatever you have in your kitchen right now. We're gonna start off by taking a small piece of foil, about yay big, yay. And you're going to crunch it down into a cylinder, uh, roughly, I don't know, maybe like a centimeter tall. A trick that I use that helps me quite a lot with a uh, scale is I'll have a mini, a mini, come on, there we go. I'll have a mini on standby that I can put my pieces next to just to get a gauge for height and shape and so on. But we're gonna take our little tin foil cylinder and we're going to wrap it in the coffee filter or the tea bag, whichever one you're using. And you can use a bit of super glue to tack it down into place. Ultimately, we're gonna be slathering everything with some PVA glue to make sure that the paper is really stiff and really strong. Now, when you're wrapping your paper around your little foil cylinder, make sure that there's a little bit of overhang on the top. You want it to be sticking up over the edge ever so slightly, because that way we can actually fill it up with stuff and give it the impression that these sacks are open and that they have goods inside of them. Now I'm gonna be using two things for the uh, little trade goods that are inside of our sacks. One is I have saved a bunch of peppercorns, which I'm gonna be putting on the top of some of them. And the other thing is 
some thermoplastic beads, which are so tiny and so small and they're gonna look like little potatoes or radishes or whatever else we wanna paint them up to look like later on. You can use whatever you've got lying around. If you've got just plastic beads, those work really well. Once I glued down the peppercorns and my little beads onto my sacks, I realized I wanted a little bit more variation so I didn't have two pieces of terrain that looked identical to one another. So I went back and I made uh, another sack where the top is tied up with a piece of twine and then a secondary one where it's just super glued over the top. Basically just taking the initial shape that I explained and just messing with the top a little bit. Just a quick note about basing for this project. All of these pieces of terrain are gonna be pretty much identical. I'm using round plastic bases that I've just been slowly collecting over time. And then I'm gonna be covering them with a mixture of leftover coffee grounds and tea from all those coffee filters and tea bags that we've been collecting. So just keep that in mind for every other piece of terrain that you see in this video, all the basing done the exact same way. Okay, the next part we're gonna work on are some bed rolls, some sleeping bags for our little encampment. Very similar to what we did before with the sacks, we're gonna take a piece of foil and this time we're going to fold it up until we get um, a nice rectangle that is, again, more or less roughly the size of a sleeping bag for your mini. Once we've got that bit of foil, we can then wrap it in more of our paper, glue it into place and give that a chance to dry. To give it a little extra detail and just to make it look a little bit more like a bedroll, we're going to cut a nice long rectangular piece of paper. You're going to roll it in on itself kind of like if you were making a set of uh, tiny scrolls or miniature scrolls. But case in point, you can make lots of things using these coffee filters and tea bags. But once you've got something that's sort of uh, feels like the right width, that uh, is the uh, correct length to go across your tent, um, we're going to super glue it into place. And then you can cut off any excess uh, that you have that you don't necessarily want. And then we can uh, glue that onto our sleeping bag uh, once the uh, paper is dry around it and then just trim up the edges and get it nice and pretty to shape I feel like a very classic piece to have with a campsite especially if you want to do like maybe a, a traveling adventurer or some traveling merchants is a tanning rack with a piece of leather on it or a piece of animal hide on it. The animal hide is easy enough. We're gonna take some of our paper leather that we made at the beginning of the video, trace out the shape of our animal hide, cut that out, and that's pretty much good to go. It's just gonna need some paint later on. The tanning rack, you're welcome to get as simple or as complicated as you want with the shape, but using some coffee stir sticks, I made a simple frame that was the same size as my animal hide and then gave it some support struts coming out the back and all of that is just glued together with some super glue. I really like this piece because it gives you something that's about the size of a mini, which means you've got something that can serve as a bit of cover. Uh, it could be something that a character is hiding behind in an encounter. So it's a fun little piece of terrain to add along and it really doesn't require that much extra work or materials. Another piece that also adds a little bit of uh, dimension, adds a little bit of verticality, uh, is a flagpole. I decided to go with a really simple, just triangular shape flag. You could obviously uh, update this and change it. Uh, you can paint a design on the flag if you wanted to, but I've just taken one long piece of coffee stir stick as a vertical strut, and then I've added a smaller piece at an angle at the base as a sort of support beam. Doesn't look super stable, I know, but it gets the job done. And now we've got a flagpole that we can reuse in other encounters. Uh, you can use it uh, for a capture the flag scenario in a skirmish game. It's just a really versatile little piece of terrain to have. The last piece I'm gonna quickly go over is deceptively the easiest one to actually build. We're gonna take a piece of cardboard, paperboard, 
Um, this is from a tissue box, right? But that sort of thickness. And we wanna cut it into a very long rectangle, right? That should be as wide as you want your tent to be, um, well, wide, basically. To get the shape, we're going to fold it over on itself once, right? That's roughly to the height that you want your tent to be. We're going to fold it again and give ourselves the base of our tent, okay? And then now the last fold, we just need to have a tab that's long enough for us to glue it down on itself, right? And so now we've got a super basic tent shape, but we can cover this in our paper. We can cover this in our tea bags, in our coffee filters, in the leather that I talked about making at the start of the video. And we've got a tent, it's done. It's so simple. And honestly, like I, I, I genuinely don't think I've seen somebody else share how to do this online. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but I'm so chuffed at how just stupidly easy this is. Uh, and I, I really hope it helps somebody um, because I can make lots of tents now very quickly. So I might've gotten a little ahead of myself on the painting, uh, which isn't great since this is supposed to be a tutorial. Now the good news is you haven't missed much. By the very nature of working with the same material on all of these little pieces of terrain, they're kind of all painted very similarly. Remembering that the tents are made out of canvas, the sacks are made out of burlap, and we want the sleeping bags to be generic enough that they're just made out of some kind of brown cloth material. We're just mixing up lots of different browns. Now I say mixing up because I'm in a position right now where I can't go out and buy every shade of color. So what I've been doing is taking red, yellow, and black and mixing up different variations of those. Anything that is supposed to look like canvas, wood, or leather starts off with a mid-tone color. Once that has an opportunity to dry over the gray, I check to see if it needs a second coat. After that, I come in and do a wash first. My wash is just some black wash that I keep in a bottle mixed with the mid-tone color. That way I get some shadows that are a little bit more natural. And then once the wash has had a chance to dry, I come back and I do a highlight using the same mid-tone color mixed with a bit of white. This is what's known as a mother color, uh, using the same base color all throughout the painting process. And what you end up with is sort of a more natural highlight and a more natural shadow rather than just using pure white to highlight and pure black to darken it down. Now don't get me wrong, using just pure white and pure black, stylistically, very D&D, very classic, looks great on the table. I wanted something that was a little bit more subtle because these pieces need to be interchangeable and I'm gonna be using them for d and I'm gonna be using them for turn of 28 and pretty much anything else that's in a remotely fantasy setting. Did anyone else clock that I accidentally painted my canvas flag the exact shade of painter's tape. <laughs> I feel like I could have just taken a piece of painter's tape, wrapped it around the flagpole, and just called it good. <laughs> now look, these are all fantasy pieces and they do require lots of browns because you have to imagine leather and canvas and burlap and blah, 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 blah. But we still want accent colors. We still want a little bit of something just to make them pop. And luckily I've set up each of these pieces in a way where we can do that. The leather on the tanning rack actually has a fair amount of orange mixed into it, just to give it that slight variation from the color of the wooden uh, rack that's holding it up. We're gonna go with a nice vibrant red for our flag 
just so that way we've got something that really pops and stands out on the table. Each of our little collections of food sacks can be painted up in honestly any color that you want. You just have to be a bit imaginative. I really like the peppercorns that we use because they actually look like little tiny heads of lettuce. I don't know if it makes sense for a couple of trading merchants to have a sack full of lettuce, but it looks cute and we're gonna go for it. And now finally, the sleeping bags, of course, could have been painted up like red or blue. I could even probably go back over and dry brush those colors on to give it the sense that they've sort of like really faded over time. But I wanted to keep these subtle, like I mentioned. So we're just gonna do a little bit of highlights on that sword that we put on top of one of the sleeping bags and just move on from there. Okay, so the bases for these aren't going to be anything to write home about and that is by design. What I'm doing first is giving all the bases a nice dark wash to get into all the little nooks and crannies of our coffee grounds from earlier. And then once that's had an opportunity to dry, I'm gonna come back and dry brush over the top with my desired color. I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that I know everyone's setup is gonna be a little bit different from mine, um, and so if you don't have your own flame of Udin to help you dry your pieces off faster, uh, I find that putting them next to a window um, is also uh, pretty useful. So just, just so you know, the, you've got a couple of options for drying off your pieces. Okay, we've had some lunch, we've cleaned up and reset. Everything's dry, but um, yeah, everything's looking good. We'll go through, do a nice green dry brush all over the tops of these, paint the rims black, and then we've got ourselves a whole little set of camp terrain. All right, we know how this next part goes. You wanna see some final shots, I need to end the video. If you enjoyed this video or the tutorial, please let me know in the comments. If you have any feedback or thoughts on this video, let me know in the comments. Basically, get in the comments. If you think this video deserves a like, please click that button. And if you wanna see some more RPG content, please be sure to subscribe. I have got a pretty big slate coming up in the next month of just some more tabletop goodies. Finally, if you like the work that I do and you'd like me to continue it, you can support me over at Patreon. All of my hobby supplies, all of my paints, everything is all thanks to my patrons. I would not be able to make these videos without their support. Until the next one, take care and I will see you very soon. Bye. I'm rambling at this point. One of the 